Welcome back. This is Mr. Hassan's math channel, and this is question number three from the P2 International A level, January 2021, at Excel paper. And this question here is about logarithms. It says solve seven to the power of x plus two equals three, giving your answer in the form x equals log to the seven to log to the base seven a, where a is a rational number in its simplest form. So obviously here they want us to take log to the base 7. We could, we could solve this in, in numerous ways, but the easiest way to do it is to take log to the base 7. So I'm going to do that. I'm going to take log to the base 7 of both sides. So I have log to the base 7 of 7 to the power of x plus 2 equals log to the base 7 of 3. And I can now use the power law where I can take this power. We have log to the base a, b to the power of c, which is the same as c times log to the base a of b. So you end up with x plus 2 times log to the base 7, 7 equals log to the base 7, 3. And log to the base of 7 of 7 is 1. Log to the base of anything of itself will always be 1, because this means 7 to the power of 1 equals 7. So this is equal to 1. So you're left with x plus 2 equals log to the base 7, 3. And then it says um, x equals log to the base 7, 3 minus 2. Now, the problem here now is they want us to express this in the form of log to the base 7a. And they don't want to have something else added to it. So I've got to think of a way of expressing this too okay as in terms of log to the base 7 of something now we know um that log what we just got rid of there is going to help us here in fact we should have kept it but there's no problem we're going to have log to the base 7 3 minus 2 times log to the base 7 7 these are these two are the same right because 2 times log to the base 7 7 is actually equal to 2 because this is equal to 1 but why, how does this help us? Because I've got these two with the same base and I can combine them eventually, but I have to just modify it a little bit. I have to get rid of the, oops, I have to get rid of the power there. What did I do? One second. I have to get rid of the power there. So I have to use the power law in the opposite way and write this as x equals log to the base 7, 3, minus log to the base 7 of 7 squared. 7 squared, which is going to be 49. Okay, which is going to be 49. So then I'm going to have log, x equals log to the base 7 of 3, minus log to the base 7 of 49. And then finally, I can combine these together into one fraction. So I can say this is going to be x equals with using the subtraction log to the base 7 of 3 over 49 and there we have the answer to part 1 of question number 3 okay so it looked a bit it looked a bit quicker than it actually was because of the way they want us to express the answer if it just said solve this then i could have left this as my answer but it says in the form x equals log to the base 7a where a is a rational number in its simplest form so this is what we've done here we had to continue from here, okay, and we had to put the log to the base 7, 7 back there so that we can combine these two eventually using the power law. Okay, so there we have the answer to question number, um, was it 3, part 1. Now I'm going to do question 3, part 2, but I'm going to do it on the next page to give me myself more space. Okay, part 2 says, using the laws of logarithms, solve this equation. Okay, so now what I can do, I can see that everything is to the same base of 2. That's the first thing I've got to determine, so that's good. What I'm going to do is I'm going to bring all of the terms onto one side and so that I can then solve this problem. So what I'll do is I will say, okay, let me just combine all the logs onto, let's say, this side. So I'll have log to the base 2, y plus log to the base 2, y plus 4, minus log to the base 2, 5 minus y equals minus 1. 
Okay, I could have also called this log to the base 2, 2 if I wanted to and combine them all together. Um, but I can do this. So now I've got here um, a combination. I can combine these two by multiplication. So I have log to the base 2 of, so I can say y times y plus 4. And then I can combine these with that by division. So this is divided by 5 minus y. Okay, so I've used the law of logarithms that the log to the base AB plus log to the same base AC is equal to the log to the base A of B times C. And if I have a minus there, it's B over C. So I use both of those laws here, and that's equal to minus 1. Now I've got it in this form. Okay, I've got it in this form here. Then I can use the definition of a logarithm, which is log to the base AB equals C. What it actually means is this is the this is the base, this is the power, this is the answer. So that means a to the power of c equals b. So if I apply this to here, this is the base, which is 2. This is the power, which is minus 1. And that's equal to this, which is y times y plus 4 over 5 minus y. So now I can just solve this equation. So what I can do is this is like 1 over 2 equals y, y plus 4 and 5 minus y, I can cross multiply, so I have 5 minus y times 1, and I have 2y times y plus 4, I can expand the brackets, this is going to give me 2y squared plus 8y, I can bring all the y's on one side, uh, everything on one side because I've got a quadratic, so I'll say 0 equals 2y squared plus 9y uh, minus 5, just bring everything on this side, now I could try to factorize this. There's different methods I could use for factorizing this. I like to use my window method. Okay, you can split the middle term. You can do guess and check. There's lots of ways of doing this. I'm just going to use this window method where I put the x squared, the y, the square term over here, the constant term over there. I want to find two numbers that multiply to give me minus 10y squared. So the product is minus 10y squared and the sum has to be the same as this 9y okay that looks pretty easy it looks like it's going to be minus it's going to be plus 9y so it's going to be plus 10y and a minus 1y okay when you multiply them i get minus 10y squared when i add them i get plus 9y okay so now i'm going to take out the common factor from this is y y times something gives me 2y well that's 2y and y, y, sorry, y times something gives me 2y squared, that's 2y. y times something gives me minus y, that's minus 1. 2y times something gives me plus 10y, well, that's a plus 5. Okay, so 2y, that's 10y, and my, 5 times minus 1 is minus 5, that's correct. So now I can say that this is going to be 2y minus 1, and y plus 5 um, is equal to 0. So you've got y equals a half, and y equals a minus 5. Now, we have to make sure that our answers will not cause any problems here because if there's any value of y which causes this to be undefined, we have to exclude it. And the log, uh, you can never have the log um, of something which is 0 because the log curve looks something like this. It never reaches the 0 um, and it has to always be positive. So the value that goes inside the log function must always be greater than zero, can't even equal zero. Okay, so if my values of y cause any of these to become uh, zero or less, then I have a problem. And I can see here that y equals minus five. If I take my original equation, let me just put it down here so I can see it properly. Let's put it down here. If I take this original equation that we have and I substitute into it, okay, y equals 5, I can see there's a problem here. When y equals uh, minus 5, sorry, I'll have the log to the base 2 of minus 5 plus 4, which is minus 1, and this is undefined. It will cause a problem. Okay, for here it's okay, even here. I can put minus 5 in here. This will also be log to the base 2 of minus 5, so it's undefined. So, you know, even if it's in one place that it causes it to be undefined, 
you cannot include the answer. So y equals 5 is rejected. So there's only one solution, which equals y equals a half. Now, what was the question, just to make sure I've answered it, to solve? Yes, okay. So y equals a half is the only solution that will cause this to be solved. y equals minus 5 will cause this to be undefined. So we have to reject the answer. Okay, it's very important for us to understand that. Okay, so there's the answer to question number three. A lot of people lose marks by not excluding this answer, which causes it to be undefined in this topic. And that's something you have to know how to deal with. Okay, so there we have it. Question number three finished. Um, other questions from P2 um, of January 2021, you can find in this playlist that should appear somewhere over here. And this area will appear a playlist about logarithms from P2. Subscribe to my channel if you haven't done so already by clicking on this link. And somewhere on the top of the page, you'll have seen another a card that takes you to a different past paper P2 that I have done. Thank you for watching and see you soon.